Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. We are back with another Cosmonarchy cast over. I hope you are ready to join us for some PVT action. It's Hamster taking on Newt on Impetus. Now this map was, uh, or this match rather, was played uh, and it was all the way back on the 1st of April. Now, not that many changes happened to Protoss or Terran since then, uh, but I just wanted to point out that this is a little bit older. However, since both of these players are into the throne room stage of Acropolis number one, uh, I'm recording this on the, uh, right before we start the second day of Battlements, actually. It's uh, the 14th of April, so two weeks since this match has been played. Uh, I still think that there's probably some tendencies we can go on. These players are fairly stable in terms of their skill levels and their understanding of the meta. Uh, so yeah. We're getting more players in all the time, though. Uh, for example, there's some players who are pretty solid overall uh, that I would point to as uh, players who are no longer in the tournament or not in the tournament at all. I'd point to uh, E. Calypso, who has already been featured on the channel as a pretty solid Protoss. So people are looking for practice against him. He keeps up to snuff on the meta. He watches the videos. Uh, in fact, he's uh, very happy to have himself on that on the channel, and I'm happy to put him there. And, uh, of course, you know, if you're looking for versus Protoss practice for whatever reason, he might be somebody to think of. Uh, EUD64, another guy who has been watching the videos, uh, plays a little bit of Terran. Might be worth a Veer versus Terran practice if you need that. And there's plenty of Zergs. Uh, obviously, unfortunately for Jack, he is out of the tournament now, uh, not able to qualify into the playoffs. But uh, from that perspective, uh, he is uh, also available for practice, presumably. So you might be able to catch him. Now, on this particular matchup, Hamster is the favorite. Uh, he's playing the race that uh, Newt struggles the most against and has the most ingenuity, I would say, of, of our Protoss players. In fact, uh, the Shambler himself, in his exit interview after going 4-0 in the Group B of the Battlements, uh, something that he mentioned is that Hamster is basically setting the meta. So, uh, something worth pointing out here. Now, we will see Newt open up with his patented Cyclops drop. He's going for uh, Fulcrum into Starpad, with his first purchase being a Vulture. Now, once he gets 100 minerals here, he's going to think about what he wants to make. It's actually cutting workers to make this happen, so this is going to then mean that he needs to kill at least two scribes, probably, in order to really give a, a good shout of it. And he probably wants more damage than that. Mason will be bopped here as he tries to get a read on what is being made. He does see a lot of gas being harvested, so that should put a little bit of something-something in his mind. You know, what are you making out of that? Why are you harvesting so much Vespine? And in Cosmonarchy, as you can see, you can harvest directly from the nodes. You don't need to cap them. There is a new node for gas. It's not just the geyser. In fact, uh, I often do watch uh, pro play like ASL and Artosis casts and say in KCM on YouTube and stuff like that. And still, when I really sit down and think about it, I'm like, wait, why aren't they harvesting gas? And then I realize, oh yeah, in, in Brood War, you have to cap it. That just seems silly. Inflexible, perhaps. Anyway, third Cyclops on the way. So the timing of this can be a little bit finicky, but I think most of the time Newt will attack with uh, either four Cyclops or three Cyclops in the vir first Vulture after already laying the mines. Legionnaire darting to the side to try to be a, uh, you know, avoid getting caught. And the Vulture putting a little bit of a brave face on over here on the front line. And it looks like uh, Newt will elect for the fourth Cyclops. He's actually going to wait an extra, you know, five seconds here to pick that one up. Dracken and staying at home. And it's kind of interesting. Because the scribe uh, does end up seeing that, you know, there was a fulcrum. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming that Nude has done this versus Hamster before uh, because he's remaining at home so that he can catch any move out. In fact, he's even going to see the uh, Trojan with the Legionnaire. I'm not, I, I think it will have uh, still been envisioned by the time he actually panned his camera over. And you can tell based on his uh, Dragon positioning. So we will see what he ends up doing. Also, if you just look at the minimap the way it was moving, it's probably an air unit and not a ground unit. So he's already going to peel off two of his... Uh, Draconins, the treasury already on the way. The uh, drop being spotted by that Legionnaire is obviously a little bit unfortunate for our boy Newt, as he took a circuitous route in order to get there. And you can already see the Draconins standing at attention. But there are four Cyclops here. And no matter what Neblime tells you, four Cyclops can beat two Draconins. But does he even want to go for that, or does he want to go for the workers instead? A little bit of a force targeting happening over here. He will pick up a worker at the very least from this whole engagement. And he's obviously denying a little bit of mining time. Better targeting would definitely yield a better results. And there you go. Three workers total. Could get a couple of more. Oh, they're all juicy, clumped up like that. Is he going to get any more shots? Yeah, there you go. There's a fourth worker. And you can see Hamster hitting the stop key to try to spread out his units a little bit more. Eventually. All right. We see what's up. We see what's up. We see what's going on. I don't see the rubble from the Trojan. Uh, but I also don't see the Trojan on the map. So my guess is the Trojan did end up getting sniped. And now we have uh, kind of a reset there. 
Was it worth it? That's the end question. You only killed four scribes. You did deny mining. You also get a confirmed scout on the expansion, so you know that you're on a little bit of a, uh, a time to come back into the game. Adding a quarry to the natural so that he can build workers on site. Eventually, he'll need a quarry at his main as well. He's got a lot of minerals, but not really any easy way to spend them. He's not going for vultures. Uh, not going for additional fulcrums. Instead, just going for the Goliath play. And the anchor is nearly finished. But is it going to be finished in time? Not looking likely targeting out that uh, mason that's constructing it. And honestly, I mean, Hamster has a little bit of power here. Uh, but I do think that that anchor is going to eventually get finished. There it is. Now, at this point, the uh, push is out. If Hamster had just decided to commit to that and tried to pick the Goliaths before any clerics hit the field, right? There's not even a stockade to make them. I think maybe he would have had a little bit more power. But I think that is something that you can say about Hamster. He's adding rogue galleries now. Probably going to go for some bar guests to reduce the impact of armor in the equation. He's actually going to go ahead and use flash shielding to his advantage here, but he didn't pull that dragon and far enough away. So that does not end up going his way. If he stayed for two more shots, he would have actually killed the anchor. And then maybe he could have worked out some more. And that's, again, just adding to my narrative, actually, that I was starting to build in my head here, is that I think it's it, something you can say about Hamster is that Oof, he doesn't always have the killer instinct. He has the idea, but maybe it's like, you know, one second too late, or he cancels less than a second too early, like in that anchor case. And that's something I think he can maybe work on a little bit is, you know, knowing exactly how aggressive he can be. Now the Goliath's move out is coming, it's seven Goliaths. And I think Newt smells blood in the water. He's like, wait, you only had a couple of Drax. You're definitely doing something behind this. But not, not exactly willing to move out just yet. Wants the Ant Seal to clear the witness first so that his opponent is in the dark, and that's a good move. But doesn't realize that he actually has a, an advantage. And why would you have an advantage at this point? You know, your drop was uh, foiled. You didn't get as much damage as you wanted, but you still got some. You know, at best, you're even. At worst, you're behind, and he is behind in terms of workers. So we can see and confirm that. And traditionally, the uh, Protoss arsenal is not really well versed in this situation. Nice little uh, setup to catch the witness there with the Anseal popping out to provide detection. By the way, if you guys are wondering why they don't just build watchdogs, the uh, missile turret equivalent in Cosmonarchy, they do not detect. Static defense does not detect as a general rule. You need specialized units for that. The Lodestone is a rare exception, but it's an add-on to the Ministry slash Treasury, and people have not factored it into their builds just yet. So There was some funny talk about how, uh, I think it was Biddy B or Three Crow, somebody was saying, what if you move the lodestone into an anchor add-on? <laughs> and the idea of um, putting an add-on to the anchor is it was kind of funny. Not necessarily the most outrageous, outlandish thing, but uh, something I had not considered, I will admit. And I've considered a lot of things. It's just for whatever reason, never thought of that. Ansel going to come in and scout. Does see rogue galleries. And when you detect production, I say it time and time again, when you, you can then click on the structure and actually see the progress bar and what's being made. And unlike here in the replay where it doesn't provide you the tooltip, you can even mouse over it if you're curious about the name in-game. I don't know why it doesn't do that in the replay. It's just another quirk of StarCraft UI. Well, it looks like we're going to see some drop action. That's what Newt's planning anyway. Obviously, the NCL parking itself over that uh, third Nexus. And the Charlatan, ooh, that was a little close. Don't want to be losing that. Flash shielding makes it so that it is fine, but it's also revealing that you have that. Which maybe uh, would have gone under the radar otherwise. I don't think the charlatan was there during the Enseal flyover. Zealot's posturing like they're going to go for the attack. There's actually no shield to sustain in this in this comp, though. If he's in combat, he's going to basically lose the, the units no matter what. Enseal just confirming. Honestly, the Enseal could really be very huge if it can get back in time to actually help out. Instead, despite this uh, posturing here, we're going to see a drop foment. And that's going to take away some of the army. But in, almost instantaneously, that anchor goes down. And uh, Goliath also going down. There's a Cyclops loaded up by that Trojan, gobbled up. Okay, he's, he's literally loading up right in front of his face. Okay, he's going to load to make sure that he's got the right units here. Take stock of what he's actually making. Not making another anchor. Atlas starting back at home, trying to keep the macro going. Back at uh, Hamster's side, he does have an Envoy. It looks like he might be thinking about Vagrant drops, which aren't really a terrible idea. I think you can still fit five Vagrants in a, an Envoy, which is kind of ins a, an absurd amount of damage to have put in one place, right? So, worth pointing out for now. Likely something that will change, since I recently did that for Zealots, made them three transport space. You can definitely fit five Legionnaires in, a, in an Envoy, which is pretty cool. Now, the Bar Guests are going to start to get sniped out. One more shot would have done that. Bottom one in, but it's not going to end up happening. A couple of Vagrants going down, a couple... There it is. One last shot. That'll confirm that he's dead. Dead for real. The, va the Vagrant uh, turns into a timed life 
uh, enemy uh, after it takes fatal damage. And during that time, it actually has uh, very, very fast movement and attack rate compared to normal. This is a doom drop, though. And it's doom for both sides, because if Hamster just decides to attack right now, and thanks to the Anseal and uh, clearing the deck when it comes to, like, detection, uh, it looks like Hamster is not going to have any idea that this is coming. But this is leaving Newt very vulnerable. This is the kind of thing that, like, you know, Newt is the guy who qualified to... Uh, he started his reverse sweep over Veek in the Ascension 7 gauntlet, qualifying to the, the group stage uh, over, uh, the, you know, the, the guy who's been around for a very long time, Veek. You know, he's the co-developer of the project by, by this point. So you definitely expect him to be pretty good and have a good understanding of what's going on. Newt did that with a Mason pull. You know, he, he, he got a worker pull in. And he's got the X Factor. We talk about, like, oh, maybe... Uh, Maybe Hamster doesn't have that, that uh, same level of, of X-Factor play. Newt doesn't have to worry about that. He, In fact, maybe sometimes he goes for it a little bit too much. But here we go. The Vagrant drop coming out. There are indeed five of them. He's going to start chipping away. Meanwhile, back here, they are indeed being liberated of their sentence. And uh, I'm not sure. I mean, the Nexus being uh, forced down here, not necessarily a bad shout. A lot of Masons still going down because they were never answered back. Now the army starting to trek back up the ramp to see if they can respond to that threat. And admittedly, the Vagrants back in the uh, inside Newt's base are a lot easier to deal with than this Doom Drop that has been deployed here. But it, there's only one Cleric left. I think all of them ended up getting uh, picked apart. Uh, Vagrants being very, very cost efficient here, especially with the Charlatan to multiply their damage. These ones still not over here, still not dead. So many Masons have gone down. It's been a brawly situation. Zoning away the Envoy so you can't pick it up. Instead, that'll just allow it to uh, move through. Now, of these Trojans, only two of them have anything in them, and it's actually only enough for one Trojan to even be loaded up. It's four Goliaths that escaped, indeed, the Doom drop. Now, you killed the Nexus, so you shut down the mining, and Hamster doesn't have his, natural, or his third base up. He's only mining from his natural right now. That's something that's worth noting, something that Hamster could definitely fix, because he's got 63 workers, and 56 of them are just doing nothing. Well, that's not true, obviously. Some of them are. So he peels off a bunch to the third. That is the right move. Kind of funny that both of our players decided to go for the drops. Hamster trying to incorporate drops more commonly. And you know what? Looking at that, I think maybe five vagrants and an envoy is probably fine. You know, they're not the most powerful unit. I was kind of thinking they'd do a little bit more. But also, you think about it, the Envoy unloads a lot slower than the Trojan. Coming back in for more. Maybe uh, snipe some of these pylons down. The double embassy definitely helping out here. Vagrant taking some chance hits. Oh, he actually forces a cancel. I feel like that's premature. But his rest of his army wasn't there. Now, there is an Empyrean coming. And four Goliaths, at the, with, especially with them being so wounded, do not uh, beat that. Anseal could be shielding this anchor right now, but isn't. That's a little bit of a mistake from Newt. Definitely could have bought him a little bit more time. We got the uh, Vagrant trying its best to uh, make shit happen with it. Unfortunately for uh, for our boy uh, Newt, he's got the workers on the front line, and that could be punishable, but it doesn't look like Hamster's actually doing that. Instead, the Dracodins are just going to slowly fall to the sustain. The Cleric's healing up the Goliaths quite a bit. These ones still have been allowed to do things. I don't know what's, what's happened over here. The, everything's depowered. Empyrean cracks off some warning shots and reveals indeed that there is an Argosy. So it's going to be more Goliath. Never enough Goliaths, apparently. Not for Newt. He's made tier two, but he hasn't actually used it yet. No Sentinels, no uh, Captaincies, no Starports. And escaping with two of the four Goliaths. The cancel on the Nexus I definitely think was a mistake. I feel like there, there were Zealots and Vagrants in production. Uh, there were some units that were still trickling out that he could have turned around without canceling his attack. I think the attack is fine, uh, but you don't want to give your opponent such an immediate win. You want to tie them up a little bit. Because imagine if that Nexus does go down eventually because of a lack of reaction. Well, okay, that's a regrettable on the mineral front and the time front, but it buys you time to get more units out of your structures, right? The pylons would still be running, you know, uh, for, for that whole time. Just a single Vagrant unloaded by that Envoy. Just just annoying. Peeling off a couple of Goliaths to deal with the threat. Not really the biggest of deals. Now, the uh, third base is very open and unprotected here. I, th I think Newt has a really good chance of coming into this position. I think Hamster has put himself in a strange world by doing some fancy stuff. He's making a Solarian. But he only has the one Empyrean, if I'm not mistaken. And it's not in position to do anything right now, anyway. Vagrant's trying to engage. They do have really good DPS, at the very least. That's something that you can say about them. 
Unfortunately for Hamster, it's not going to be enough. And the Nexus will fall, as well as most of the Scribes, if not all of them. The Empyrean coming back to check on things. Vagrant's just seeing what's going on. They will eventually find some action. we got three Zealots coming over here. The counter drop like it's TVT in StarCraft 1. Newt trying to see what he can manage. Scooping up two of those Zealots. He can actually uh, reunite at 12 o'clock here with that one Vagrant that's being annoying. If he wants to uh, get a little bit more damage done. And indeed, looks like that was Hamster's idea. Funny unload spots, because he unloads directly on top of the treasury, so they just find whatever. Meanwhile, back at home, Hamster engaging, and Pyrian doing a little bit of chip damage. Clerics can patch it up. Oh, look at that. One more for good measure. Envoy even being able to escape, so you can redrop later. Very expendable units. A couple Envoys, actually, out here for Hamster. Maybe getting lost in the sauce. We're getting another uh, drop attempt. Newt and uh, Hamster have taken a handshake. But hey, there's a Solarian and there's a Didact. So we're going to see the Didact hit the field. And this is uh, an old enough game that we'll actually see the old cloaking behavior. So if you're wondering why there's not a smooth fade in with the shadow support and all that cool stuff. Yeah, well, the reason is... Uh, well, it wasn't done by this point. So. A little bit of a blast from the past. Now, this is a pretty good Goliath ball, but there's not that many clerics that are in a good spot to heal, like, one unit and keep them alive for a very long time. Solarian starting to launch its stewards, but, you know, not really needed right now. Kiting all the way back home. Remember, there was the drop, yeah, and it is indeed going to move out. Technically, that was spottable by Hamster, but I don't know if he had the uh, APM to figure that out. Bottom right is starting to be taken, but it's so far away from any reinforcement point, and the scribes are indeed going to get bopped. We're going to see what Hamster wants to do, because these Trojans will stay on site, and he'll just try to snipe the Nexus yet again, just like he did in the main. Speaking of, the main is re-established. Worker count back and even. No, really in anybody's favor just yet. I would say the economy definitely in Newt's favor, though. And here comes the Didact. If he's not careful, he could lose this, but he could also do a really nice stasis and try to surround. And maybe that's what he's trying to get done here. Oh, look at this. Okay, stuns uh, most of them. Forcing an unload of only one. Yeah, this is a deadly surround situation. Only lasts eight seconds. So there you go. Oh, he even catches another one. Now there's a warden over here. Is it enough for the cleric and two goliaths? Definitely not. A couple of units getting uh, caught out here to cover the army movement. Realizing, okay, I know where his force is. And look at this outside of the range of the warden. That's kind of big. Didact. Are you going to snipe the didact, Newt? No, you're going to get stasis, actually. You can see the channel time. You could technically move out from that, but... Now, here's something kind of cheeky. He stasis them, but then he doesn't actually commit to killing them. And I think that's because he's a little paranoid, right? Hamster is uh, going to be attacked by Newt pretty soon. Death by a thousand cuts, perhaps. You know, never really able to establish a flowing economy. Charlatan caught in the open. That's a lot of gas that's going to go down the drain and not really have much impact. Instead, he falls back, maybe baiting some of these Goliaths a little bit further out. Eventually, will be executed. Now, the Vagrant line trying to execute. Here's a really good stasis. Gets a bunch of those units out. Didact trying to be focused, fired by the Goliaths, but they can't really get around their own ice ball. More Goliaths raining in, though. This is looking like a death push. He just needs to be able to pick this Didact. Another stasis has gone down. Where is the reaction from Newt? Stepping forward. Not going to be enough with that Didact continuously isolating half of his army and neutralizing it. Not half, but a good number. And even then, he could have maybe tried to turn and, and fire onto the Didact. Soften it up. Even if you can't kill it, you'll do some nice hull damage to it. The uh, Goliath anti-air ignores the armor of the uh, of the Didact. A little bit of timed life action over here as those Vagrants time out. But you're starting to see the uh, limitation of the Mask Goliath play, right? Nude is basically just doing Goliath Cleric the whole way through. Not really adapting. He did get a starport and starting to set up additional bases here on the extremities. But he was not able to do much worker damage here. Uh, and he also was not able to really finish the job. Looking like maybe he's going to go for Seraphs. That'll help the uh, Armor Rend versus things like the the Solarian and the Empyrean. Uh, obviously, you can also just irradiate in general, and that will stack up some damage very nicely. Could also be for the Azazel. So we'll see what's up with that. Here's the reaction. Initially, not immediately knocking away the Envoy. Oh, Hamster made it real easy for him. That was a mistake. Unforced error, it feels like. We got another Vagrant Bomb ready to go. 
really interesting. I think back then, um, at when this game was played, Newt, uh, something that Newt has developed since then is an appreciation for the Phalanx, and I think a lot of that is, is owed to Top Ramen, who has been playing pretty well with that unit. He's trying to stack up a bunch of action there. Vagrant sort of just covering the whole map, basically. Well, as soon as he puts that quarry down, he cancels it, realizes he's about to be attacked. He's going to go ahead and pull away. Bargast on the front line, that's not where you want him. Adding the armor pen is not a bad shout, but there's so many Goliaths here that I think the steward has very, very minimal efficacy. You'd probably want epigraphs in this situation, a bit cheaper than the Empyrean and the Solarian. Much better and more reliable at single target damage, and that's really what you need to bring down the uh, sustained healing. Defensive recall? No, it's an offensive recall. As the double didact play sneaks in to Newt's main, he's halfway across the map. Flexibility of Protoss coming to play. Remember, this army is not actually that strong. The Vagrants being the primary, you know, foot soldier here, and they are easy to deal with. Here's a Seraph, but it instantly gets sniped. Newt not on the ball for that. He does counter drop at the third, getting economic damage. Still very much in the game. Remember, Newt has a decided worker advantage and uh, a base advantage as well. For all of the suffrage he's currently experiencing with the production being attacked, he still has a better army on the field. And there's not really any escape play happening over here for, uh, for Hamster, right? Doing a lot of damage to the Didacts. Trying to start the channels out for his stasis. Maybe give him that economic and army advantage. Has wiped out the drop. The double didact is pretty brutal with the with the recalls, but even still, he's almost losing it. Unfortunately, his anseals have been destroyed, so he has no more active detection to deal with the didact cloak. Needs to declump his army and try to split them up so that the stasises have less efficacy. Is starting to break out though. There's really not that much left for actually dealing damage, right? Very, very small number of units here. Where is that Anseal? It's just about to finish, just as some of these units start to pop off. And indeed, the Empyrean will eventually be brought down. The Solarian has no more stewards anyway. Oh, actually, he's not even using his anti-air guns, I should mention. Trying to fly away with his Anseal before it can end up dying. He's flown into a watchdog, though, and away from the Didax for good measure as well. Here's the Anseal for further detection. Is indeed going to be fine. Empyrean will finally get sniped. Trying to channel a recall to save the ground units. Not exactly the main play there. The captaincy sustained so much damage, it's almost done, but it's also basically going to be burning. Hey, during all this time, Newt has just been powering up on the worker count. He can saturate his top left, re-establish some more production. Fulcrums. Of course, it's Goliaths. That's what he wants more than anything at this point, is more Goliaths. Let's see. Second Argosy coming here for Hamster. Not really that much of a float compared to Newt, who's got a lot of minerals in the tank. Could definitely be adding more things, you know? Could definitely be uh, dropping, like, ten captaincies instead of just one that's incomplete. Adding a lodestone over here for detection. I like that. In fact, I wouldn't mind a treasury down here with a lodestone for that kind of detection. You put a couple of goliaths in there for good measure. Instead, it's just a watchdog. Maybe he can patrol an anseal around. Obviously, his fulcrum uh, blocking the commandment if he wants to reestablish the starport. Doesn't seem to be thinking in the long term right now. I guess you can say that about Newt's macro is that he... Uh, he throws stuff down, he, he will spend the money eventually, but doesn't have a he's not following a plan per se. The Vagrant's really not working out for Hamster in this particular compositional matchup. Looks like there was an attempt to drop. That doesn't get very far. Good stasis though. Just remember there's two Didax still up. That first one was never finished. Never finished off. We've got Goliaths in here, helping out inside the, from inside the anchors, killing off the stewards. The one Solarian that was reinvested and I feel like was a bit of a, a mispurchase there. Trying to target down the Anseals, but not going to happen. They are going to slip away. And yeah, the Solarian basically out of out of action now. He's only got a couple of stewards left. Plenty of Anseals. This is another thing. If you stack up enough Anseals, it's really hard to burst through them. And you're going to start to have to deal with the, the Didax, right? Now, the one thing is that if you stack them up, they're easier to stasis and neutralize. While they're stasis, they don't detect. Starting to get into the deep of things. More and more watchdogs being added. Hamster now floating a little bit of cash as adding an Ancestral Archives. Could definitely use a Crucible over here. It looks like he will read my mind. Back uh, at the uh, front line, though, he's being engaged upon. These uh, Didacts are still active. More and more Stasises. It's nonstop. 
They are supposed to uh, decloak when they start their channel, but unfortunately right now they only decloak after the cast is finished. So that's a, a bug that will eventually be rectified, but of course, since it touches balance, we'll do save that for after the tournament. Glad that I'm noticing that here, though. Unfortunately, Four Nudie doesn't really have anything in place to deal with this one Zealot has killed three workers. Might kill a fourth here. Yeah, looks like it's on track for that. Meanwhile, the re-engage, but there's mostly the Goliaths are still here. Anseal's charging forward, that's ill-advised, but looks like none of them will end up going down for it. The uh, Lodestone was sniped for dealing with that detection. Could definitely set it up again. Bunch of Vagrants still here, but that's really the meat and potatoes. I feel like Hamster would have so much more efficacy if he had Dracodents with this force, or Zealots or something. The uh, the Vassal's just not doing it. I guess the, 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 the fear of the uh, Zealot or any sort of melee is that you're going to stasis them. Trying to, again, protect... And Pyrian's dealing lots of uh, splash damage to the Anseals, though. You gotta watch out for that. Still a good, good detection here. Great set of stasises from the two Didacts, but they only last for eight seconds. And of course, you're invulnerable during the channel. Another force of Goliaths spreading out. They can target down this uh, third base, which is very lightly defended. And it looks like Hamster is slowly being ground to a pulp, losing the Solarian. Only down to his Empyreans. The Anseals providing good detection and coverage. There it goes. Even in, you know, absorbing some of that initial damage, I think that's, again, ill-advised because the splash goes right through their shields. And here comes the uh, force on the, the counterattack over here. I don't know if it's likely to get too much trying to surround in this situation. Newt will react, of course. Has a couple of more units lying around. This force can take a moment to patch itself up and then maybe try to pressure the front gates. But this uh, fourth base is going to be... Put in the ground before it can really activate. And remember, Newt's been on five bases this whole time. Even though his composition is super inefficient, he never finished his captaincy. He's uh, got enough Vespian to afford tier three and will soon have enough minerals, I'm sure, as well. Although he is losing some action there. This next is going to go down. This minimal, uh, you know, worker harassment, probably not going to be super impactful at the end of the day. Has a bunch of anti-drop Goliaths at the top left. And a treasury up build being built on site in the bottom right. Aiming to take that base away from his opponent as he also goes for that nine o'clock or three o'clock position. Four o'clock completely empty. Its counter position at ten definitely been occupied for quite a while. Manchester's here to try to increase the range at which the Empyrean and the Vagrants can engage. That might be the tipping point to try to single out individual units. Nice little stasis there to get a good clump. But the Magisters are falling a lot faster than the Solarians and Empyreans did. That has to be said. Only three Magisters left. Make that two. They are being zeroed in on. Newt realizing his composition is uh, indeed being uh, anti strated to some degree. Designed against. Vagrant stepping forward to allow Hamster to try to surround this stasis ball. Obtecton here as well. Very, very solid. But these individually high powerful units, they can be dealt with. They can be focused down. There's just so many Goliaths. For a while there, there was 10 in, in, in one go being produced all at once. And now here comes the, the sort of additional push. Unfortunately, the Anseal not there to uh, cover, but look at how many Goliaths are streaming on in, dude. I don't think Hamster has the answer. Even though his comp, I mean, his the Vagrants were not it, I think. I mean, they, they definitely did better than I maybe initially suspected. Uh, but the the fact that it's only Goliath Anseal, and really it's, it's mostly Goliath. The Anseal just here for detection at this point, and not even on the front lines right now either for that matter. Coming on back in. Very, very low, by the way. An Empyrean shot will probably kill both of them instead. Only glances the back and does finish off the first. These couple stasises aren't as impactful. We got more and more Goliaths streaming on in to replace the ones that have fallen. We do have two Uptectons now. So that's a pretty big deal. But the fact that we... Yeah, I, I think, okay, we're starting to see the turn. When you have multiple Uptectons, it's a lot harder. And these Goliaths didn't have any clerics with them this time around. Only now are clerics starting to be reinvested in. Mason realizing that 9 o'clock is being occupied. It's just being gas harvested here. We can see tier three at any point as long as he gets the mineral count. Does need a little bit more on that as uh, bases are starting to mine out. A bunch of idle workers in top left could be activated. This is really funny that, it, it, to me anyway, it's very funny that there's like, you know, so much action happening. Uh, and yet it's all with like the wackest compositions. Uh, Hamster making the, the didact stasis is work. I think, uh, you know, only now putting a starport down. Feels like a bit, uh, definitely a missed opportunity there. Queuing up so many Goliaths. He could cancel most of these Goliaths and afford tier three immediately. But not interested in it. Just wants the Goliaths. Very, very one-track mind here. But we've got three Uptectons, guys. The Uptectons will not stand up to that, or the Goliaths will not stand up to that, no matter how many clerics you feel. And the Vagrants are just a, a double life. They're, I, it's revealing to me now that Hamster was fielding them not for damage. 
but for uh, tanking and for buying time. Their double life, adding a lot of power there. Good stasis to catch three more Goliaths on the way out. And despite having so many more bases, despite having, you know, better economy, and even, even coming in with a wounded Goliath to finish off this Nexus, or to uh, deny any mining, definitely working out here. Now, there are no more Vagrants, so the Goliaths can try to step towards the Uptectons, but he is going to need to deal with everything else first. Looks like there were uh, indeed some, some shenanigans happening over here in the bottom right as well. Nexus now lost its shields. The Argosy units have indeed fallen off. Oh no, this, this could be a nice little catch here for Newt. Does have to watch out though. Well, instantaneously warded off by the stasis. I think the main thing he's lacking is something to pick units, right? And the Empyreans kind of counter like small arms, but you know, Sundogs would be pretty solid here. I think, you know, he obviously he could have had tier three a long time ago, even now he can afford it. Maybe he's even thinking about dropping it here where the starport was. Not exactly sure what he's thinking. No, immediately reacts to the uh, presence here of the Empyreans. He can focus them down. Indeed will do so. There's four more left, so a lot more where that came from. Oh, and all the Anseals go down to the combined splash. Charlatans giving a lot of power as a force multiplication to this army. Hamster's army looks a lot scarier now, and losing 3 o'clock, at least hemorrhaging the uh, workers there, might be able to react to that at some point, but... He's building a commandment. He had one here. He just forgot about it in the heat of things, apparently. And the Nexus will eventually go down, but so too is that treasury gone. We've got 25 Masons trying to make their escape. The Goliaths are going to go ahead and meet the paltry force that are chasing them out. And Daedala is on the way. SimCity not the best here for Newt. But, you know, he's trying his best. He's seeing what he can do. Four Empyreans. This is a very wacky game, I will say. Very, very strange game. Putting up a lot of static defense here as the fourth base. Finally going to try to be established for, like, the, the fifth time, maybe. <laughs> I mean, if you count this attempt at, uh, at 9 o'clock, it's definitely... The fifth time. Only one Sentinel. That's not going to be nearly enough for this ground army, particularly with the Empyreans smashing it. So a worker transfer as Newt abandons ship. 10 o'clock will not be his any longer. Trying to take three again. Not a bad shout. Obviously, the stragglers there are going to be uh, dealing with that for now. Halfway done with the Daedala. I don't know what his uh, plan is going to be. He never uh, finished the captaincy. It feels like so many options were on the table for him, but it looks like he'll just pivot over to Starport. I, I don't know if it's Mass Gorgon. I actually don't even know where the starports are being built right now. Goliath's trying to step forward, fighting on the Empyreans, but there's so many of them. He does end up sniping one of them. There's still five, and the three Uptectons cracking shot after shot as well. The Goliath stack is not nearly as impressive as it once was. Can't step any further forward. They've long since abandoned the Didax. Maybe the Didax actually got caught. I'm not sure. We'll have a look for them in a moment. Doesn't look like they're still in play. So they must have been sniped at some point. I'm also, you know, watchful of a potential double recall since you can uh, cloak each other with uh, multiple didax, but it doesn't look like that's the case. Yeah, I think they were sniped earlier. Missed that. Big occasion. The top left gone. Worker count still very high for Newt, but not really on very many active bases. Doesn't have any capped geysers. Not that he really needs it. Starports are pumping Gorgons. They were being built in the natural area. Daedala just about to finish. The one Vagrant. Able to get one Mason kill. Not really the end of the world. And a cheeky little drop to try to clear out some of these workers. Hamster deciding to attack move with that. Obviously not going to get too much done there. There are a lot of workers over here. So this almost doesn't matter that much, but a lot of them could have been transferred to the bottom right. Like he's not going to... There's 40 workers harvesting minerals at this point. You're not going to be able to... I, I don't think he's going to be able to break it, break the point of saturation. But a lot of those could have been transferred over, right? This is definitely very good. If we start combining all of these kills, we're... we're we're talking about almost, uh, you know, 40 workers killed by the time that any units get here, right? Yeah, so something like 36 workers uh, killed there. Very, very efficient. Now, the uh, engram will deny this unload, it looks like. That's a little unfortunate. I was thinking about landing at uh, 4 o'clock, but it's really hard to defend at this point. Iron Foundry is going to be the weapon of choice. So we will see Tier 3 actualized by the Terran. A lot faster than he, he took a charge of Tier 2, right? He made the, the one starport and made two Seraphs that... Or one Seraph that got uh, spawn camped. Not having any impact there. The Gorgons, not a bad shout. Gonna go ahead and uh, emergency lift, but it's not gonna matter. Treasury will go down.
But he has swung his, the rest of his army over here. He does have to watch out for the Empyreans. Because they can and will deal a lot of damage to the sacked Gorgons. But that's where the Goliaths can start to really flourish. He's got so many of them. And if you deal with all of the uh, the meat of the army, with all of the uh, the Gorgons and the Goliaths dealing with all the vagrants, you know, there's not nearly as much uh, here to tank for Hamster. So his army's starting to look a lot weaker, I think. You know, even though he's not bank he's banking 2k minerals, but he's not banking that much. He's got the synthetic cyanide out. I don't know what that's for. Okay, the double didacts are here. So these are fresh ones. Going for a recall on top of the diadem. The problem is, does he even have that much to recall at the end of it all? He's going to try to mass up for it, I think, as his army is starting to get caught. Does do a very nice turnaround to get rid of the ant seals. So again, detection going to be a problem. Okay, avoiding the diadem blast. Does end up getting recalled. There is a clarion there. That was what the synod was for. I don't think it's going to come through, though. Yeah, it ended up getting sniped back at home. The diadem is going to go down. Bought a lot of time, and the, and the uh, worker count is not actually that far lower than what it used to be. We don't have any detection here, though. So this is still a very big problem. A penumbra on the way, adding on the additional future station for additional penumbras, for that matter. You can see him here. Queuing up a second one. Iron Foundry does finish. He doesn't have the Vest Bean for any more. Again, no gas caps, so definitely something that Newt can improve his play with. But he does have that 3 o'clock base, and it does have two geysers. Landing the anchor, giving a little bit more range to this affair. Gorgon, only a single one here to try to slow. And there's a recall channel to get them out of dodge. That's a third didact. Five total being invested into this game. Yeah, we've well, we've got the high-tech stuff. I think as the penumbras come out, it's going to be a lot harder for uh, Hamster to take those favorable engagements. Particularly his stacks of Empyreans are not going to be good. Uh, not not going to be well served. Now, he can stasis the penumbra, but he's going to need really precise micro to do that. And we've seen pretty good stasis so far, but not as many as maybe we would like. Now, he reveals his position thanks to that forward Goliath. Newt is aware and can take the engagements. He's got multiple penumbra. They can walk over small units like the Goliath, which is funny to just call the Goliath a small unit. That could result in more splash, but <clears throat> as they crack shots off, you're going to see a lot of vagrant deaths all at once. Keep uh, tabs on the positioning of these Empyreans. They are not moving. Penumbra's holding strong for now. Okay, finally being sustained. And I think it was just a little bit too little too late. If one more Penumbra had hit, joined the fight, I think that would have turned it if you look at the amount of power that was being put down onto the Empyreans. But it was just a little bit too late there. And stacking up on top of all the Goliaths definitely helped Hamster out there. And that will be Newt falling at the end. I do think that, economically speaking, he had a lot better. You can see on the on the score here, he have harvested a lot more resources. But uh, looking at the way that the, the drops went and such, didn't go his way. We'll say that for sure. GG, boys. We'll be back with more Cosmonarchy tomorrow.